Under clear skies, 62 degrees on a perfect crisp night for football here in Auburn, Alabama. No rain in sight. No wind will be a factor as far as our place kickers are concerned. And the captains meeting out at the 50-yard line. There is Billy Brewer, head coach at Old Miss. And you see his record. And, of course, you see the intensity on his face. He's very concerned facing a very fired-up Auburn team. Billy Brewer will get the football first. The Rebels have won the toss and elected to receive. And there is Pat Dye and his record at Auburn. And, of course, as we have told you on the opening of the telecast, he has come under some criticism after the upset by Tennessee. The Auburn Tigers were ranked number one. He said, wait a minute, Paul. We've only lost one ball game. And I'm just thinking about people talking about Bo Jackson. And you're hearing it down here, if you can believe it. Jimmy, they're talking, if they didn't have Bo Jackson in the backfield, they might be a better football team. The reason they're doing that is because they won last year without Bo Jackson. And they're saying he, he carries the ball so many times because they want him to win the Heisman Trophy. But if you talk to any other coach around the country, they'll say, give me Bo Jackson, and I guarantee he'll be the Heisman Trophy winner. There is Chris Johnson, the kicker number two. There is Bo Jackson over on the sideline waiting for his Tigers to get the football. Chris Johnson will spot it from the 40-yard line and back deep to receive for the Rebels. Number 24, that is Willie Goodlow. So right away, J.R. Ambrose Paul is not in because of turf toe. And that, that's going to hurt. They'd love to have him on the kickoff. Well, you saw his numbers before the game started. J.R. Ambrose, the man is a phenomenal football player, but I can guarantee you one thing. He will be playing when they touch the ball on first down. He'll be in there at wide receiver. So we are just about set to go. And, of course, we'll be tracking all the nighttime football for you with our ESPN crew all around the country. Willie Goodlow and that man, Chris Johnson. Johnson, by the way, is just a freshman out of Spanish Fort, Alabama. Hard to grow up in Alabama and not be recruited by either the Tigers or the Crimson Tide, huh? You can't get across the border. Don't get across <laughs> state lines. It's bootlegging. <laughs> the crowd on their feet. War Eagle has them fired up, and we are underway from Auburn, Alabama. It's high, not too deep. At the six, Willie Goodlow. Big hole, look out. Goodlow up across the 34-yard line in the grasp of Pat Thomas out of Mobile, a senior. So breaking out on offense for the Rebels of Ole Miss, the quarterback will be David McKinney, the sophomore. He is 6'2", 200 pounds, a very strong competitor. And there's what he did last week in that win against Tulane. At wide receiver will be number six, J.R. Ambrose. There is Ole Miss and the running Rebels offensively. Anthony Rogers, Andre Roberts, number 29, the running back, Dean Brown. And off goes to Nathan Wansley, and Wansley clacks it up across the 40 near the 45 in the grasp of Arthur Johnson. If that Wansley name sounds familiar, it should. He's got two brothers that play in the pros, Otis and George. Defensively, for the Auburn Tigers, well, they've allowed 337 yards per game, averaging about 21 points per game on defense. You don't anticipate Ole Miss to be very successful, Paul, rushing the football against Auburn. No, they, if they have, they're going to win this football game, they're going to have to throw. Nathan Wansley, first down and more into Tiger territory across the 45, driving down to the 42 of the Tigers. There is Wansley in what he did last week. Gary Kelly, the sophomore out of Birmingham, came up to make the tackle. And the reason Wansley gets outside is because Arthur Johnson, who is on the outside, number 40, gets blocked at the line of scrimmage by, by Perry, number 81, of Ole Miss. And that brings him to the outside. Good play. First and 10 from the 42 of the Tigers. I pro set slot formation, top of the screen, in the slot. It's J.R. Ambrose. Straight ahead goes Wansley, his third consecutive carry. He is 5'9", 195 pounds. He is one of the strongest of the volunteer of the uh, rebels. He bench presses 400 pounds. In one lift, take me a week. <laughs> First pass for McKinney. He can run. Needs the block. Gets it from Wansley and is tripped up from behind by Harold Holman, the senior out of Macon, Georgia. It looked like the defensive line. They were stunning to the outside, but you're going to see Harold Holman come in. 
number 94 and make the play. Look at it. It looks like the middle is open. All right, McKinney says, okay, now I can run. Wrong. They close down. The linemen are so quick. Harold Hallman, 94, makes the play at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Robinson, number 32, checks in at the nickelback for the Auburn Tigers. Third and 10 from the 42, backpedaling McKinney. Sets up the screen. Got his man, Nichols. And he is stacked up way behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of two by Tommy Powell, the junior out of Greenville, Alabama, and Ben McCurdy, the junior, also out of Eider, Alabama. This is one, one thing that Ole Miss does very well. They'll do a lot of screens, a lot of draws, and they execute well. That time they didn't. So we'll see the punting team for the first time for Ole Miss, and their punter is number 10, Bill Smith, who Billy Brewer told us, often, Paul, I've kicked the coverage. He's got that strong away. He can hit him 75 yards in the air. Back deep, Trey Gaines, number 19. Smith airmails this one. A towering kick that will hit it about the goal line and sails on in for the touchback. So after a good drive that penetrated down to the Auburn Tigers 42-yard line, they had to punt, the Rebels did, and the Auburn Tigers get the ball back. Jim Kelly and Paul McGuire back with you from Auburn, Alabama. 12-21 left to go in a scoreless first quarter. The Auburn Tigers will get the football for the very first time. And, of course, they are led by their senior running back out of Bessemer, Alabama, number 34, Bo Jackson. At quarterback, it's Pat Washington, the junior out of Mobile. He says Freddie Wagan wide to the left. He's to the top of the screen. Back in an eye pro set. Tommy Agee is your fullback. Motion across by Parks, the tight end. Bo Jackson. Hammered down at the 32-yard line as Old Miss a bit fired up themselves on defense. Howard Moss, the sophomore out of Germantown, Tennessee, number 38. The first volunteer, excuse me, the first rebel to get there, and there's a penalty flag to be checked out. Old Miss defensively, allowing about 312 yards per game. They come in with a record of Two victories, one loss, and one tie. They tied Memphis State 17-all. They lost out to Arkansas 24-19. And then they beat Arkansas State and Tulane back-to-back. -back. He had a dead ball personal foul on this play. Personal foul against Auburn. Dead ball. Personal foul. That's not the way Pat Dye wanted to start out. He was hoping to get an early jump on the Rebels. Well, again, I think we're going to see Auburn throw the ball and throw the ball short. But with this H-back situation, they like to run out of it. But they can throw out of the H-back. Craig Gaines, wide to the right, number 19. Big hole. Tommy Agee, first down. Across the 30, up near the 31. Talk about a quick hitter. One of the problems you have, Camberello, the center, gets a good block. But one of the problems you have, when you key on a man like Bo Jackson, it leaves the fullback open. You're going to see Tommy Agee. Once he gets through the line of scrimmage, he is downfield. The only people that got a shot at him are the secondary people. Noblin number 35 is one to get to his feet, but it's a first down. Line of scrimmage just across the 30. Washington on the option. Off to Bo Jackson. And that time the Rebels stayed in their lane. Joe Nathan Shelley, the junior out of Vicksburg, Mississippi, redshirted in 82, came up in the corner, Paul, and forced the play inside. You like that name? Joe Nathan? It's, it's spelled Jonathan, but his name is Joe Nathan Shelley, and he is a good one. Folks, you'll hear a lot about this man hitting people. Used to be Tony Dorsett. <laughs> Scott Bolton, number 24, and Freddie Wigand deployed in the slot formation, running back in an eye pro set, and it's second down a long nine. Jackson, convoy to the left. Jackson. Dives for the first down across the 40 up near the 42. Stephon Moore, the freshman out of Wigan, Mississippi, came up to make the tackle. Watch the blocking over the left side by Wallace, 78, and Lott, 66. All right, when you get to the outside and you get Bo Jackson to the outside and the linebackers get caught back on the inside, then you have the power to run wide. Bolton, number 24, who was a wide man, got a block on the corner man, and they got Bo Jackson to the outside. There is Bo Jackson and what he's done for his career. He came into the game 425 yards, shy of Joe Cribb's all-time Alabama or Auburn rushing left. Washington, his first pass. Right on the money, man, wide open in the 40 is Craig Gaynor. Jim, I was telling you, if, if you're thinking about Auburn running the football with Bo Jackson, 
with Agee, with Ware, with Stewart, you're going to get yourself in trouble because on a rollout pass like that, the linebackers, they'll take the, the fake by the play action of the run, and that'll free the wide receivers. They're going to be one-on-one -on -one with the corners and safeties downfield, and that's tough to stop. At Washington in that traffic, first and ten, quick hitter. Bo Jackson dives down near the 25-yard line. Another Auburn first down and a big block by Tommy Agee. Opening up that hole and a big block by Ben Tamborello, the center, number 55. Tamborello, lot number 66, cohort number 53. Now, just take a look. There's, there's a block by Lot pulling out to the outside. He makes the block, and that hole is up in the middle. Bo Jackson picks up another first down. He may have 100 yards before the first quarter's over with. First and 10 for the Auburn Tigers, just outside the 25 of Old Miss. Washington, the quarterback, bends in with Jackson and Agee in the backfield. Motion across. That's number 87, Ron Middleton. Washington gets away from one of the Rebels who was in a sack position, and Washington wisely threw it out of bounds up near the first down marker. Showed some poise on that play. It was Michael Portis who came crashing through and put pressure on Pat Washington, the quarterback. Now, did you see what Washington did when he got away? He saw his receiver was covered, so all he did was throw the ball out of bounds. Waste the play. It was only first down. He knows he has three more plays. And he knows he's got number 34 in the backfield for those plays. Now they give it to 30. Second and 10, Auburn. Bo Jackson behind A.G. Sandwiched down at the 23. Jay Webb, the senior out of Columbus, Mississippi, a high school fullback who gained over 1,000 yards. Submarine Jackson down low. When you look at this Ole Miss team, folks, you, uh, sometime during the course of this game, and it happened last week on their, in their defense, they are a young football team. They don't want anyone to make excuses for them. Billy Brewer said, don't make excuses for our team. We are young. You may see it nine out of the 11 defensive people, freshmen, on the field at one time. Slot formation to the right. Scott Bolton, the slot. Gain is out wide to the right on third and seven. Bo Jackson. Touched it inside the 20 and dives down to about the 18-yard line to be shy of first down yardage. Dan Boyd, senior, a walk-on for Old Miss in there on the tackle. You think they, they block? Watch. From the right-hand side is the right tackle, Searles, number 60. Watch this. He turns up, and there's his block right there. Puts his man on his back. Bo Jackson picks up about seven. Chris Colbert, or Chris Knapp, is the place kicker for Auburn, the sophomore, out of America's Georgia, out of the hold of Lewis Colbert. On its way, he nailed the beauty. So the Auburn Tigers, on their very first possession, get on the board. 8.48 left to go. Order number one, Auburn on top of Old Miss, 3 nothing. The Tigers of Old Miss leading 3 nothing, And on that drive, Paul McGuire, Bo Jackson, six carries, 34 yards. Three drives, that's 100. Willie Goodwell is back deep. He's been there before. He took the opening kickoff. At the goal line. Big hole again. Goodwell off to the races. Kevin Porter saved the touchdown. All right, we're going to see Goodlow. He comes up the middle, Jim, and what happens? The wedge sets up, and those are the four or five guys that are going to be in front of Goodlow. And when that happens, the Auburn Tigers coming down. Now watch, they'll sacrifice themselves and leave that hole right in the middle. They block it beautifully. Both sides kick out. Here goes Goodlow. There is a tackle saved by his ex Doc number three. Porter makes the tackle. Of course, Chris Johnson, number two, was also there, but they're in great field position. First and ten from the 37. Pitch back. Wansley hammers down inside the 35. Ben McCurdy, the junior out of Eider, Alabama, 6'2", 226. A major in civil engineering. Did a little engineering there. They also had the defensive left hand as Andre Bruce, number 93, got his arm in there. And, and, but there's still a pickup of almost three yards. When do you think Ole Miss will unveil their passing game? Now. Second and <laughs> seven. How about now? Holder flanks out top of the screen. Blitz is on. McKinney in trouble. Dodges it run. Dives inside the 30. Brings up third and two. Gerald Williams again in there on the tackle, the fourth leading tackler for the Auburn Tigers last year. Watch number 98 come in now. All right, and also Andre Bruce, number 93, is going to be in there. Gerald Williams, there's, there's Andre Bruce, 93, forces him out of the pocket, and David McKinney gets down inside the 30-yard line. They've got 
second and or third and about one and a half. Wide to the left side, Andre Rogers back. Joe Nichols and Nathan Wansley in the eye pro set as McKinney bends in. They try to run the option, and it's a very slow developing play. Andre Bruce that time hit McKinney, and McKinney wisely, Paul, did not lateral the ball out. Uh, McKinney could not lateral the ball out. <laughs> I don't know whether it's wisely or not, but Andre Bruce was there, and then Pat Thomas is going to clean up. Watch this. The fake is in the inside. As he pulls out, Andre Bruce grabs both of his arms. Now when he turns, here comes Pat Thomas, number 41, to kill it off. They'll try a field goal. With Brian Owen, the 5'7", 162-pound freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia. He was 12 out of 16 in field goals in his high school career and made 44 of 45 extra points. I can't believe they're not trying the field goal. Well, they've got Bill Smith in there to punt the ball. They're going to also, somebody's going to take a timeout here. Is that, it's delay a game. They're gonna, now they're going to move it back. Well, now, Billy Brewer this morning, Paul McGuire, told us of the accuracy and the powerful leg of Brian Owen. He said his range was 55 to 58 yards. Why wouldn't the coach try a field goal? Unless something happened in the warm-up that we do not know about because if I look, look at across, Jim, at the flag, and the flag's really not doing anything, it would have been about, well, it would have been about a 49-yard field goal is what had happened, and that's not his range. Well, his longest field goal this year is 48 yards, but Coach Brewer told us this morning that his range was 55 to 58 yards. So there's five Brewer. seconds count five yards. Uh, this, this, this is something that's the coach's decision and not mine. And I'm glad I didn't have to make it. So on fourth and nine, Bill Smith, the punter, is in. He banged the last one into the end zone. Auburn's not buying the fact that Smith is going to punt it. They're playing up tight. Hangs a high, towering, caught up, coverage is good, hits at the three, it'll be killed inside the five. Good specialty teams play, and number 15, Frank Porter, the 200-pounder out of Memphis, Tennessee, the first down there on specialty teams, 3-0 Auburn. ESPN's exclusive live Saturday night CFA College football is a great matchup coming your way on October the 12th. It's a Big 8 conference clash between two top 20 teams, Nebraska and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State sophomore tailback Thurman Thomas is the number two leading rusher in the nation. Of course, a serious candidate for the Heisman Trophy, though some Auburn fans here might have something to say about it. I think so. First and ten for the Tigers. They lead 3-0. 6.03 left to go. Deep in the end zone. A.G. breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage and hammers his way up to the eight-yard line in the grasp of Joe Nathan Shelley and others. Good blocking up front by Ben Tamborello, who Pat Dye thinks is maybe the best center in the SEC. He made the All-Italian team again last year. There is Tommy Agee. I think he was named after the Mets outfielder. <laughs> Second down and six yards to go for the Tigers and Pat Dye. They come in with a record of two up and one down. Slot formation to the right, Trey Gaynor. To pull it wide, motion across. That is number 87, Tillman. Jackson on the carry. Dives up near the 14-yard line, and that's very close to a first down. It is a first down. College football going on tonight. Well, this was this afternoon in top 20 action. Iowa came from behind against Michigan State. Michigan, no problem at all with Wisconsin. Bo Schembechler might have a better club than many expected. Illinois upset number four, Ohio State. Oklahoma, a blowout. They were about a four-touchdown favorite against Kansas State. Oklahoma State, a little tougher time than most expected against unheralded Tulsa. And look what Arkansas did to TCU. First and ten Tigers. Washington airmails it to the 24. Wygan hung on and then lost the football incomplete. Hit made by Joe Nathan Shelley. Back to the top 20 scores. Nebraska overwhelmed New Mexico. Air Force came back against Notre Dame uh -oh. and BYU with Robbie Bosco. Well, they just airmailed it to Colorado State. Tennessee, a tough one against Wake Forest. They might have had a little letdown after beating Auburn last week. UCLA, no match against Arizona State. And how about Miami? Tough time. Tough time. That game was close all the way. Second and ten. Motion by Ron Middleton. Washington to Bo Jackson. Huge hole and a first down. 
Howard Moss, the sophomore out of Germantown, Tennessee. Watch the blocking. Watch 53. Howard, 55, Tamborello, and Stacy Thurall, 60. Jackson, you can watch the blocking. You watch the explosion. Watch this. And he's in full stride before he even gets the football, Bo Jackson. When he does that, take a look. at You're not even going to slow him down. He picks up another first down. Bo Jackson, eight carries so far, 53 yards. That's a game for some running back. That was almost a game for him last week. From the 26, Auburn looks at first and 10. Fakes to Bo Jackson, Washington to go airborne. Got Agee out of the backfield, nice delay. Cracks it across the 30. He got two yards on the hip and then plunged across the 30. It's tough enough bringing Bo Jackson down, but when Tommy Agee gets the ball, and this offensive line blocks so well, but the fake, the fake helps the offensive line. Bo Jackson credited his offensive line, and they are a great one. 500 yards per game, but take a look. Ole Miss not even off the line of scrimmage. And when A.G. gets the football, Jim, he, he does exactly what you said. He picks up another two or three yards. You know, about the time the Ole Miss defense starts to key on number 34, that's when Pat Washington goes up top. Yeah. Second, short five. Ron Middleton motion top of the screen. There goes Bo Jackson again. Up near the 35. And Jeff Harrod hanging on. The sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama. They're going to be about a half yard short. Not where they put it, they're going to be a whole yard short. Where number 36 also went on the hip. Freddie Wigand checks in, checks out. From the 35, third and a long yard. Double tight end. was all Bo Jackson. Number 80 had him stop. That was Wesley Walls, the freshman. He had him about two yards behind the line of scrimmage, Paul, and no way to bring him down one-on-one. -on -one. It isn't it isn't it something when you watch Bo Jackson, Walls does make the stop. Where's in the backfield? They toss to the outside. Tommy Agee is out there blocking. He missed the man who was Walls, but then Bo Jackson hit like two or three yards in the backfield by Walls. Watch this. Here is the power of Bo Jackson. Walls Clean hit. Bo Jackson just sheds him off and picks up the first down. The Auburn Tigers lead 3-0. Three, three minutes left in the first quarter. The Old Miss defense, by the way, has only allowed two touchdowns in the first quarter in their last 18 games. Sellers, Park, and Bolton in there now offensively. Dive play to AG. Penalty flag is down. And so is A.G. at the 40-yard line. Paul McGuire suspects holding. In that situation, and as fast as that flag comes, it does not take a genius. A lot of strikes on the start. <laughs> there it is. Holding, calling out the board. Well, Old Miss can use a little bit of a break at this point. Let's talk about the young freshmen. Billy Brewer is going to have some kind of team in the next two or three years, but they've got some maturing to do. How important is it for Old Miss to stay close in the early going against Auburn? Well, when you talk to Billy Brewer, they, he knows he has a hustling football team, especially defensively, and he knows that they are young. And, and Billy said, in two years, we are going to have a great football team. But to keep this game, if they, if Ole Miss lets Auburn get ahead by two touchdowns Holy early in the game, offense. then they're going to really have a problem because I don't think they can come back. You saw the holding indicated, so it's first and 20. In baseball today, the Mets lost. The Cardinals won. The Cardinals have won the Eastern Division. Do you think St. Louis doesn't have some speed on the base pass? They got the same kind of speed they have here. Bo Jackson is also a great baseball player. <laughs> and Bo Jackson has the football. He's got three blockers in front of him. Good defensive play, however, by Jeff Harrod, number 66. Coaches say he loves to play the game. He'd probably love to have some help when he's got Bo Jackson out there in the flank one-on-one. -on -one. Well, when they won that play, they pulled the right tackle, Searles. He comes all the way from the other side. You're going to see him number 60 in front of Bo Jackson. And Herod, number 66, is the man that's going to make the play. He just flies down the line of scrimmage. He does not have face masks. He's not grabbing onto his mask. He's got his hand wrapped around. The official was right there. Coming out wide to the right bottom of the screen, Freddie Wigand. Scott Bolton, top of the screen, and the eye set, second and 11. Washington. Got his man at the 44. That is still way shy of first down yardage. Well, Wagan ran it just a turnout, and that time when they threw the ball away again, he was, he knew he couldn't go any further because Pat Washington threw the ball underneath. 
Wagan, number 14, the split end. Maybe the best receiver ever at Auburn, Pat Dye says, when he's all finished. Trey Gaynor comes in at flanker, and Wagan goes out. It's third and three. You don't think number 34 might see the football? Boy, that's a great guess. You know that? <laughs> Motion across. That is Parks. Here comes Bo Jackson. There goes Bo Jackson. saved the touchdown. The man that gets the block, of course the whole offensive line's blocking, but number 30, Tommy Ag, puts his man on the ground. Watch to the top of the screen. Number 30 out front, well, look where his man is, down on the ground, gets Bo Jackson back to the outside, a missed tackle, tackle by Moore, number 27, Bo Jackson's almost at the 30-yard line. And he's almost at the century mark in the first quarter. 12 rushes, 90 yards, and still a minute to go. Oh, I said he'd get, he'll get 100 in the first quarter. He's got 10 to go. First and 10 from the Mississippi. 31. Here's the 10. There it is. He dives to the 20. Another first down for Bo Jackson. Everett Flakes, the junior, saved the touchdown. You talk about a great runner, Jim, and he is a great runner, but he also gets the blocking up front, and he's the first one who admits to it. Take a look at the blocking down the line of scrimmage. Now that's Charles is blocking his man all the way past the opening in the hole. Then Bo Jackson gets down. Field flakes number 42 makes the tackle. That's another first down. That's also 101 yards. Parks, the tight end, lined up to the left side. Wagan, 14, for that wide bottom of the screen. AG, quick hitter. Not much doing on the right side. Bo Jackson gets the rest. 25 seconds left to go in this first quarter, and it's still 3-0. In American League Baseball action, Toronto wins the Eastern Division. They win. Of course, tomorrow, Phil Necro goes for his 300th. California has beaten Texas and Kansas City playing tonight. Phil Necro's been going for his 300th for almost a month, hasn't he? Yeah, the last four times. <laughs> he went home last week along with his brother Joe, of course, his father. Mr. Necro is seriously ill. Phil went back and pitched on Monday night. A 36-yard field goal by Chris Neff, the only scoring so far. Rebels had a couple of chances but came up short. Along with Paul McGuire, I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to Auburn, Alabama. The Tigers lead Old Miss 3-0 on that 36-yard field goal, but they're knocking on the door. It's second down and eight from the 18 of Mississippi. Across the 15, hammering down to the 14-yard line. And the story of this football game, number 34, Bo Jackson. Well, when we look at these first quarter stats, my friend, passing Ole Miss minus two, and that's the key. We knew Auburn, they were going to run the football, and that shouldn't be a problem for them. But for Ole Miss, uh, again, I believe that, Jim, for them to stay in this ball game and to win this ball game, they have to throw the football because I do not think they're going to be able to do it running it. Well, I still wonder about the punt. Yeah. Midway through the first quarter when they're down in scoring position. At least try for the field goal. Third and four. Jackson slithers down to the 10. And I believe, Paul, he's about a foot or a foot and a half shy of first down yardage. I don't believe they're going to kick a field goal here. Not, not the way they're running. Bo says, let's go. Bo wants to go. The crowd a, wants to go. Jim, not only can he run upright, but just take a look what happens. When he sees the hole is no longer there and he's sliding down, he just gets underneath and picks up, picks up that extra yard by going down. He said he plays baseball. He's practicing the Pete Rose slide. Where A.G. and Jackson in the backfield now. For the Auburn Tigers, fourth at about a foot and a half. Where and A.G. are usually the blockers. They toss the boat. Clearing air traffic control, Bo Jackson picks up the first down. Everett Flakes in the vicinity. Bo Jackson now, 16 carries, 109 yards. Well, the play before, Jim, we saw him go down underneath. Now, if you're going to go down, he's going up over the top. The offensive line, they bury the defensive line down. As they put him down, it gives Bo enough chance to get up over the top. He makes the play and picks up the first down. Here comes Bo. He's going to wait till the line knocks the people on the ground, and then up over the top he goes. Ron Middleton comes across from the H-back position and made a block right in the center. He just put the wings and flaps down and hit full throttle. War Eagle, War Eagle. First and goal from the eight, and Mike Fitzsimmons, the junior out of Philadelphia, 6'2", 256, jumped offside. We'll see if he was drawn offside or not. Procedure against the Tigers. Well, penalties have been the only thing that has stopped Auburn. 
That would have been Stacy Searles, number 60, the right tackle that moved. Paul, again, we talked about the youth of the Mississippi team. The Rebels Good have got to stay close. They, <laughs> if this team can stay close to halftime, they can regroup a little. Well, they play so many people on defense, and they're fresh all the time. So, you know, they, they can... They, and they can afford with their freshmen as good as they are to, to, to change people in and out. A.G. Stop at the 10, and you saw the drive power of Tommy A.G. He's 5'11", 210 pounds, out of Maplesville, Alabama. He just kept the knees turning. Continuous effort. I, I don't like that thing. Second effort, it, it says that they stop. But watch A.G. He, as you're right. Right here, he's going to get hit at the 10. But he ends up at the 9. A.G. does not go backwards. Oh, he said his favorite athlete is William Andrews of the Atlanta Falcons. He runs a lot like William Andrews. Forward. Not a, not a bad man to, to look up, up to, is it? <laughs> Second down from the nine. Option play. Washington tucks it in. A good arm tackle. Wrestles him down at the six-yard line. So it'll bring up third and long. Michael Portis, the nose guard out of Meriden, Mississippi, a law enforcement major. You the lasso there. Handcuffed him. I didn't say that. I didn't mean that, folks. I really didn't. I didn't, didn't want to say that. <laughs> okay, Trey Davis is in the ball game now, the wide receiver. But I, it's just it's questionable whether they'll throw down here. Not with the likes of Bo Jackson and A.G. in the backfield. Gaines to the bottom of the screen, the tight end. Jeff Park, 82, top of the screen. And the eye throw set, A.G. the fullback. Jackson, of course, the tailback. Too much time. So two penalties. Very costly to Auburn on this drive, Paul. These are mistakes that, that a team with the experience of Auburn, they just should not be making. But they had, they were changing players, and now I wouldn't be surprised to see two wideouts with Gaines and Freddie Wagan coming in the game. Here comes, here comes Wagan. Wagan, 14, checks into the lineup. Bolton checks in. They're going with three wide receivers. They take the H back and the tight end out. And of course, the wide side of the field to the left of Pat Washington, the junior quarterback. For Old Miss to keep them out of a touchdown here would be a mental victory if nothing else. The way that Auburn has moved up and down the field almost at will. Bo Jackson will not score. He's shot down at the three and a half. Jeff Noblin out of Jackson, Mississippi. He saved the touchdown. And the field goal team fought down to a chorus of boos. Oh, they boo, yeah, but you, you take the points when you can. This is a tough football team. You don't want to make any mistakes. This is an excellent play. It's a rollout draw to Bo. They put three wide receivers in. A.G. gets an excellent block again. But Doblin is the man that really does save a touchdown. He gets Bo by the legs, and that's the best place to tackle him. 21-yard field goal by Knapp. He's got a 36-yarder, and this one is good. So the Auburn Tigers have steadily moved up and down the field. There's still 10.57 left to go before halftime. And the Tigers lead Ole Miss 6 to nothing. with more after this. Drive 90 yards, only three points, and it used up 10 minutes on the clock. I did a game last year, Jim, when they had 11, uh, an 11-minute 11 drive, they had a 10-minute drive, and an 8-minute drive, and they scored touchdowns on every single one of those drives. But it says a lot for this young defense of Ole Miss keeping them to three points. Chris Johnson bangs the beauty from the 40. Nathan Wansley fields and looks for blockers. It is not there. This Auburn Tiger team is fired up. A good tackle at the 18 by Shan Morris out of Atlanta, Georgia. 3-0, now 6-0. Auburn leads. War Eagles got them whooped up here in Auburn, Alabama. They're not happy after that upset by the Tennessee Volunteers. Old Miss not happy. They trail 6-zip. 10.53 left to go before halftime. McKinney hands off to Wansley in the back. Field off very quickly by Tracy Rocker, uh, the freshman out of Atlanta, redshirt last year. Tra Tracy Rocker is there. They just, the, uh, the defensive line moves so very well. That's Roland, number 96, coming down the line of scrimmage. He doesn't get to the ball carriers, but Rocker does. And when Rocker makes a hit, you're going down. That is also Kelly in there with him. Just across the 20, second and a long nine. McKinney looks over that 5-2 defense deployed by the Auburn Tigers. Lock formation to the left side. Pitch back is Wansley, and nothing doing at all. Talk about 
stopped at the 16-yard line. Gerald Williams, number 98, and Brian Smith, the freshman. Oh, you can feel that one up here. Gerald Williams makes the play, but watch Gerald Robinson on the outside, number 95. He is the man that's going to turn the play to the inside. See him sitting out there. We'll want to see Gerald Robinson, 95, out there. He must cut back, and he cuts back into Gerald Williams. Isn't that beautiful? That's defense together. Now it's an obvious passing situation, third and 13. But, Paul, what about running the ball against the fired-up Tiger defense on first and second down? You've got to loosen it up a little. I would. Now McKinney goes. Here come the Tigers. Penalty flag is down. McKinney is on the mark. Incomplete at the 32 for Andre Rogers. Had he hung on, it might have been a first down, but there's a penalty flag to be checked out. Now there's going to be a holding penalty against Ole Miss. And when that happens, the incomplete pass. They have refused the penalty, fourth down and 10. So we'll once again see the punter, and this time, the man that can kick at 70, let's see if we can find the holding, Paul. There's Roland, there's Rayburn, number 62. Offense. No, I don't, I, that's Define. not holding there, I know that. Fourth down. Genovese is not holding. The holding may occur here, is that rocker? That that, looks, that's not holding either. I don't know where the holding penalty came, but I didn't see it. Bill Smith, 6'3", 255, a junior out of Little Rock. Averaged almost 48 yards per kick last year, and that's Trey Gaines back deep. He fields it cleanly. Tigers will come out with great field position. High snap. Smith pulls it down. Gets away a low, wobbly kick. Gaines at the 38. They've got the wall set up. Good penetration from behind, but good field position for Auburn. They lead on two field goals by Chris Knapp. So Jackson, 116 yards tonight so far, Paul. Well, take a look at this. This is in the wishbone. The first three seasons, he averaged 13.7 carries per game for 93-yard average. But since they put him in the eye formation, take a look. He carries the ball out 23 times, 10 more times, and he's averaging over 100, almost 100 yards more. That's incredible. There is Bo Jackson getting a rest. Curtis Stewart, number 33, the junior from nearby Montgomery, Alabama, checks in as his replacement, along with Reggie Ware in the backfield. And it is Stewart. Bangs across the 30 and hammers his way up near the 33. After that punt, and while we were away, there was a 10-yard penalty assessed against Auburn for holding, which backed them up for the line of scrimmage to 27-yard line. Second down, seven yards to go now for the Tigers on the top end of a 6-0 score, despite the fact, Paul McGuire, they have pushed the Mississippi Rebels up and down the field. It's not how much yardage you gain, it's how many points you put on, on the scoreboard, and Ole Miss, they're still hanging in there. And they're really only one play out of the lead. Dive play to the fullback, Reggie Ware out of Huntsville, Alabama. That should be enough for a Tiger first down. Lance Hathcock, the junior out of South Haven, Mississippi. Backup nose guard in there in the tackle. Right guard. Dan Colbert, number 53, is limping. They're yeah, they're going to take him out. Bring in Stokes, number 64. Well, the measurement for the first down. Bo Jackson getting a breather over on the sideline with 116 yards on 17 carries. They say it's a game of inches. Quarterback sneaks, too. Now, this is strange. They take the H-back out, Middleton, and Sellers, the, the tight end, Jeff Parks, the tight end, excuse me, and they put in the wide receivers, Trey Gaines and Freddie Wagan. Well, they said it was a first down. They gave him a first down. Oh, sorry. So it didn't look like it to me. No, not from the measurement. <laughs> oh, defense outside. Mississippi jumped off side. Now, were they drawn off? No, that was a nose tackle right on top of the center. You know what they say about playing nose tackle, don't you? It's like being a fire hydrant at a dog convention. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it always amazes me how the man over the ball, but, but again, if you look, listen to the, the change of count, the quarterback raising and lo lowering his voice, you don't know that, but you'll see the nose tackle right there. Is off, that's Hathcock, number 92. So it cost Ole Miss five. It's Red first ball. and five. Offside. Defense. Six nothing. Tigers lead the Rebels. This is a great throwing down, Jim. 
really is almost a free play. Slow developing play to Curtis Stewart for the big hole. And he barrels up. That should be another Auburn first down up near the 48-yard line. A reminder that the Grambling game is underway, and Dallas, Texas will be checking in on that as Eddie Robinson goes for victory number 324. We're looking at, at the linebackers now of Ole Miss, and they're just they're shuffling back and forth along the line of scrimmage. And what they're, what they're supposed to do, and that's Herod number 66, they're supposed to seek out the ball carrier. Bacon number 58 was also there, but that was still a first down. That graphic tells the story of this football game. Back to pass, Washington, pump fake. Corner bit on the fake. Wide in. Penalty flag. It's pass interference. It's first and goal. Novlin bumps into Wigan. And Wigan is down, and so is Novlin. This was a, just a fake short out to Freddie Wigan. And when he watch this here, he makes that move to the outside. Washington holds and then just lets it fly. Stephon Moore is the man that, that misses him. But watch Noblin come in here. He's doing the only thing he can do. He's not looking at the football. He's looking at, at, at Freddie Wagan. He figures, I'm going to knock you down because it's only a 15-yard penalty. Mm -hmm. From Save the, the line touchdown. of scrimmage. Yep. Save the touchdown. Heads up play by the defense. He knew he had no chance. Pass interference. Defense. First down. Noblin's going to come to, from the right of your screen. Watch this. He doesn't have a chance for the football. Wigan has the touchdown if he doesn't do that. And again, it's only a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. So the line of scrimmage now, the 37-yard line of Old Miss on the short end, 6 to nothing. Stewart and Ware, the running back. An audible by Washington. Washington fires inside the 30, looking for Scott Bolton and another penalty flag to be checked out. Well, number nine, LSU at home. A little noisy down there in Baton Rouge, but Florida's on top, 7-zip. Houston leading Baylor 7-0 in the first quarter. North Carolina State having their hands full with Maryland. That's at the half. And word from Dallas, Texas, Grambling has taken a 7-0 lead against Prairie View. Been outscored 93-43. I just don't, I don't know whether this flag, I didn't see anyone move, whether it's an illegal formation or not. They had Tillman, number 85, who was a split in on the outside. And whether he lined up on the line of scrimmage or not, I don't know. There is Freddie Wagan, the sophomore split in, 6'1", 175 again. Illegal procedure, offense, first down. You know, we go back to that shot of Freddie Wagan for a second over on the sideline. He's a red-haired young man, just yes, like the other Auburn great receivers. A couple of names come to mind. How about Jimmy Phillips and Terry Beasley? Paul McGuire. <laughs> Not from Auburn, but redhead. The Citadel. Get that. First and 15 after the penalty. Ware turning around to Stewart and telling him to play. Says, you carry the ball. <laughs> it's coming your way. Yeah, you're getting it. You're going to your left. <laughs> you left. <laughs> It did look funny, though, because Ware did it twice. He, he turned back, back to look at Stewart, sat back down again, turned back to look at Stewart, and, and then they tossed the ball to Stewart. Well, they picked up that five, Jim, and that's what you want to do. You, you had the penalty. You still now have two more downs to pick up the ten. So it brings up second down and ten. Old Miss defense digging in. Would like to force some kind of a turnover. Time of possession is almost unbelievable. Auburn approaching six minutes, and Old Miss has had the ball under seven. Washington wants it. Oh, incomplete to Wagan on the post pattern. Johan Shelley with a big hit. The ball a little bit high, but certainly catchable for Wagan. Wagan, you go back and you tell Pat Washington, if you're going to throw that slant, I want that ball to hit me right in the numbers. I don't want to have to go up in the air for it because you're going to cost me my life. Washington steps back, and this is just a slant pattern to Wagan coming down. But this ball is a little bit high, and he waits a little bit too long to throw it. The follow-through is great. The ball is coming there with good speed. But Joe Nathan Shelley almost killed Wagan. Washington airborne again. Good arm. Got his man inside the 25. Scott Bolton first down for the Tigers. Here comes Bo. Well, he's 
certainly been well rested after picking up 116 yards on 17 carries. And a good first half for Pat Washington. The coach who said it's his ball game tonight to win or lose, barring injury. Exactly right. I think that they've, uh, Jim, I think they've now made a decision on their quarterback. It's taken them a while to do that. But again, in, so that you understand about Pat Washington, he's had an awful lot of injuries. Old Miss, really trailing 6 nothing on the drive. Auburn, so Old Miss takes a timeout. To Mimi, my house is too tough. Coming up at halftime, scores and highlights with George Graham. It's first and ten for the Tigers. They lead 6-0 in the line of scrimmage, the 24 of Old Miss. Motion by Ron Middle and top of the screen. Here goes Bo. First and goal inside the five. Jeff Noblin met Bo head on. You know, you talk about Bo Jackson, you can talk all, all night long. Watch number 30, Jim. Tommy A.G., watch what he does to that defensive line. He just goes in and wipes out that whole right side. And look who's right behind him, his roommate, Bo Jackson. Here it comes. A great block by Middleton on the outside. And here comes Bo. And there goes Bo. And Noblin is, is, uh, is trying to bring Bo down, but he picked up another five. That's unbelievable watching those two guys work. They spot it just inside the four. First and goal. Jackson, A.G., and where the running back? Guess who? Touchdown, Tigers. Guess what? <laughs> oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. 19 carries, 137 yards, and there's still six and a half left to go in the first half. 137 yards for Bo Jackson. And he, he you know, he, he talks about his offensive line. He knows how important they are to him. But he also loves his roommate, Tommy A.G., who's the man that's in the hole. And there's Ware in the hole. He followed both fullbacks right into the goal line. He called Tommy A.G. his insurance policy. I thought they would go for two here. Chris Johnson. He has two, ex uh, two field goals, and now he has an extra point. Let's take another look at the touchdown and watch the blocking of A.G. 30 and Ware 36, ground level. And there's the offensive line. They get low to the ground. When Bo runs in there, he's thinking about jumping. But then all of a sudden, he sees 30 and 36. He might as well follow those guys on in. They're in the end zone already. It's like a bulldozer. <laughs> 6.41 to go before halftime. Auburn leads Old Miss 13 to nothing. Back with more after this. That happy man in the middle of your screen is Bo Jackson's father. <laughs> you bet he's happy. A wobbly kickoff goes inside, and finally it went out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Tiger fans thought it was recovered by one of the Auburn players, Pat Thomas, out of Mobile, but it actually slithered out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So Old Miss will have the option of taking it there or having Auburn kick over again. What would you do? Michael Smith, number 91 for Ole Miss, is waving the ball, going out of bounds, and it didn't instead of grabbing the ball. There's the man right there. Almost cost the turnover. Pat Thomas was hustling down, almost got the ball. Now, they, they can either take the ball at the 25 or force him to kick again. What would you do? Force him to kick again. That's what Billy Brewer has decided. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They just refused. They said, they said refuse the penalty. They're going to take the ball at the 25. I think they made a mistake. Well, the kick receiving team is still out there, and they're deployed as if to receive the kick. Illegal procedure. Billy's saying, wait Kickers a minute. Decline. First down. I don't think Billy made that decision. I don't think he did it. I don't think he's very happy. Let's take a We're going to see that touchdown again. I want you to watch 30 AG and where 36. And they're going to be blocking on Portis, number number 60. Right there, hold it. Here's where the two of them, these are two fullbacks. And Bo sees the two of them, 36 and 30. Now they just drive Portis into the end zone. Bo follows them in for the touchdown. First and 10 for the 25. Old Miss trails, 13 to nothing. McKinney backpedals, deep drop. Look, and down. No, he gets out. Now he looks for someone to come back and help out. Fires upfield, and it is. Incomplete at the 35-yard line, looking for J.R. Ambrose. Penalty flag all over the field to be checked out. Is I don't know whether now McKinney was beyond the line of scrimmage or not. Kind of looked like he was. That'll be if that is if that's the case. That is also a loss of down. McKinney had enough presence of mind. He got out of Dudichuk 
number 80 out of his grasp. Heads up play by the quarterback, and then he waves, waves Ambrose downfield. Here it comes. Sudachuk number 80 is going to have him right there. But Kenny ducks underneath and gets back out to the outside. Now watch me. He'll wave to J.R. Ambrose. Here he goes. The line of scrimmage is a 25. I don't see he's not beyond the line of scrimmage, I don't think. Uh, he threw it right at the 25, Paul, so I think it's a judgment call by the official. I thought the ball had cleared his arm. They by call, the excuse me, Jimmy, they call offensive pass interference. But I don't know on who. JR, I was watching Ambrose. He didn't push anyone. Had to be away from the ball. Offensive pass interference. Also down. Also down. That's what the Rebels did not need. All right, here's the throw by McKinney. Now he's fine. I don't know if I didn't see JR Ambrose push off anyone. Yeah, you know. In the upper left-hand corner of the screen, they will save the play and come back with it. I'll show you the official that threw the flag. It's second and 23, and Ole Miss didn't need that. Draw play does nothing. It's third and 23. The Tiger defense is fired up. Alex Dudchuk, the junior out of Birmingham, stayed in his lane that time. Dudchuk was there, but number 94, Harold Hallman. It looked like he was going to be outside, but he got such a great jump on the ball, they almost missed the handoff, and he just set it up for everyone else to make the play. Well, how many third and 23 plays do you have in your playbook? You run a draw, you can run a screen here. I don't think that they're going to be going downfield and, and turn it over in an interception. Not in this part of the field. Well, with a strong punter, why not? Go for all of it. McKinney tries to safety valve, and he'll be called for grounding the football. Now, he threw the ball in the general direction of Joe Mickles, number 41, who was out there in the flat, but he kind of line drives it. Uh, yeah, well, he was also getting hammered at the time, and he, he knew it was coming. I think it was Hill, number 99, is the last man to hit him, and McKinney said, what am I doing here? Austin, get healthy in a hurry, because here it comes. Hill, number 99, probably will be the last guy that hits him. Now, there he is. Here comes Hill, 99, and as just as he throws, he hits his arm. I don't know if that's intentional grounding or not. I wouldn't have called that. Fourth down, isn't it? Better get a punter on the field. Intentional grounding. Cross it down. So the punting team for Old Miss trots out, and that man, Billy Brewer, cannot be pleased. They're a little slow on the sideline. Jim, it's one of the toughest penalties you're going to get. It's, it's an intentional grounding. It's lost it down plus the penalty. And that, that just really hurts. And there, there is a three-yard line with great... Aubrey should have great field position. Well below his average, Bill Smith, the putter, comes out. He averaged almost 48 yards per punt last year. Hangs it up for Trey Gaines. Gaines inside Rebel territory already. They've got the wall set up on the left. It'll be first and ten for the Auburn Tigers from the Rebels 41. For an update on the Purdue game, let's go back to George Grand. Thank you, Jim Kelly. Second period, Minnesota leading Purdue 14-0. Defense told it the Gopher defense stops Purdue's first down bid at the Minnesota 38. Upon gaining possession, Minnesota marches into Purdue territory. Quarterback Ricky Bogey rolls out, right side, scores the touchdown. Minnesota jumps out to a 7-0 lead. They add another score to make it 14-0. It's in the second quarter. Now let's go back where Auburn has a first and 10. Thank you, George. We'll, of course, check back for more scores as you track the Grambling game as well. It's first and ten for the Tigers. They lead 13 to nothing in Tommy Agee out of Maplesville, Alabama, in the grasp of Rodney Lowe out of Pompano Beach, Florida. The freshman, one of many freshmen that Billy Brewer has, but right now he needs some big beef up front to try to stop number 34, Bo Jackson. I'll tell you a play I would like to see is that is a fake to Tommy Agee up the middle. We well, talked to about that update from the Grambling game. Let's go out to Dallas. Well, thank you, Charlie Neal, on first and ten from the 31 of Old Miss. Pat Washington on the option. Rodney Lowe had him around the ankles. Total yards for McGuire. Auburn now 245 yards total offense. Mississippi just three. Those penalties and things are going to cost you. Now, the play I was going to talk about before we went to the Grambling game is where you, where you fake it to Tommy Agee going up in the middle like that. And when they swing Bo Jackson to the outside, when he's beyond the tackle, nobody's covering him. All Washington has to do is just stand up and throw Bo Jackson the ball. He'll be in the flat all by himself. 
second and seven from the 28 of Ole Miss. Washington gets it to Bo Jackson. He just outruns the coverage. First down and more at the 16-yard line, and Stephen Moore saves it. The freshman out of Wigan, Mississippi, an All-State high school player last year and a quarterback in high school. <laughs> it's also a sick feeling when you know Bo Jackson is to the outside and you're going to have to make the play. They're playing Bo Jackson to the inside. If you do that, here goes A.G. He gets a block, but he was holding on walls. And here is the play you're talking about with Moore waiting for, for Bo to run over him. <laughs> it takes a lot of guts to do that. Moore was on the honor roll in high school. He turned around and said, guys, I need some help. First and ten for the Tigers. They lead 13-0. Motion by Sellers, top of the screen, and it's Bo again. Bangs down to about the 14-yard line. Blocking over on the left side by Steve Wallace, 78. Jeff Lott, 66, and Lester Brinkley, the freshman out of Drew, Mississippi, number 98, will be in the center of your screen. And this man here, Tommy Agee again, his blocking. He's just looking for a piece of someone in that hole. He digs down and, and finds himself a defensive lineman. There's Ooh. old War Eagle. You had a chance to meet him last year. I bet you can, you can touch him on his chest, but don't touch his head because he will pick your eyeballs out. That room had a nice aroma to it. <laughs> Where Eagle let it smell real good. Indoors. Or AG. Knights down to about the 13-yard line, and Brinkley in on the stop once again. The freshman, he picked up about 15, 20 pounds over the spring in a weight program since coming out of high school. But brings up third down and six. And I emphasize again, if you're a Rebel fan, despite the fact that Auburn's moved almost up and down the field at will, Ole Miss is really only two plays from being back in the football game. Of course, they'd like to stop Auburn and keep him out of the end zone here, Paul. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something what happened last year when these two teams played. There goes Bo. First and goal from the four. Howard Moss. You know, it's the A.G. Jackson show. And, you know, Bo just follows Tommy Agee. And here comes Agee again. We have to show you this, folks, because he does such a great job. Now he's looking for a piece. He gets a block on a linebacker. Boyce right in the hole. And here comes Bo. He's right off Agee's tail. Sees his block. Gets the ball down inside the five to the four-yard line. How are you going to stop it? I'm going to tell you, when these two teams played last year, the last 20 minutes of the game, Auburn had the ball 15 minutes and would, didn't score, but... Ole Miss couldn't get the ball back. They lost it 17 13. There's A.G. and a dive play over the left side. Again, it's Lott and Wallace with a blocking. Reggie Ware, 36. Behind A.G.'s block. Second down and two yards to go. Fuzzy Huddleston, junior out of Plattersville, Mississippi. Very active linebacker in there on the tackle. Not active enough. They need, a, they need some horses up front. <laughs> well, that last time, Bo on short yardage, clear to air traffic control. Should we get him on the runway? I, I think he's, uh, yeah, but when you can just run behind your people, where's in there now, and also Collins. Touchdown for the Tigers again. A straight dive play. Is that where? Well, when they unpile the blue jerseys, Ware is 36, AG is 30, and it was Ware, Reggie Ware out of Huntsville, Alabama. That's his first touchdown of the year. Ware's hero, by the way, is Jimmy Brown. Well, I like it. Here comes Ware, and he's just going right over the top of that offensive line. And what's happening, and we're going to analyze it a little bit later on, but what's happening, Jim, is if you take a look at, at Auburn's offensive line, all they're doing is blocking one-on-one -on, -one on the defensive line of Ole Miss. And when they do that, that, that frees that fullback to block on that linebacker, and, and it's, it's an open hole. Chris Johnson, two field goals. Now, two extra points. Ole Miss with 1-12 left to go on the clock. There's a whale of a deficit to make up. They trail 20-0 after that touchdown by that man, Reggie Ware. 6-2, 238, and he just piled drive at home.
Saturday night CFA College football package. There's a great matchup coming your way on October the 12th. The Big 8 Conference Clash between two top 20 teams, Nebraska and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State sophomore tailback Thurman Thomas is number two leading rusher in the nation and, of course, a serious candidate for the Heisman Trophy. The Cowboys also possess a rather stingy defense, which they'll need against Nebraska. The Cornhuskers own the nation's leading offensive attack, two by their eyeback Doug Dubrose and fullback Tom Rathman. Sure to be a high-scoring showdown between two of the nation's top teams, and you'll see it live next Saturday, October the 12th, only here on ESPN. And here comes Reggie Ware in your face. Pat Washington just hands the ball. Reggie Ware looks at his offensive line, goes over top. Buzzy Huddleston had no chance of stopping him. It's touchdown. It's now 20. I would just think sometime along the line they would have gone for two. Oops. Pretty out on it there. Yow. Wants a piece of your neck. War Eagle's eyes look like yours this morning. <laughs> a wobbly kick that Nathan Wansley fields at the 20. Bangs his way across the 30, and Ole Miss has 68 seconds with which to work. Pat Thomas out of Mobile. Boy, he just excels. There is the Auburn scoring drive. Didn't take very much, but when you've got Bo Jackson, it doesn't take very much. Remember, I think Auburn, they get the ball back in the second half, I believe. Oh, I'll bet they'll get it back once or twice. <laughs> I'm just sorry. It's the start of the second half. What do you try to do? You just it, just try to maybe get yourself in position to get at least a field goal on the board to give your, your team a lift. They'll throw. McKinney is the quarterback, slot both left and right. Of course, the game breaker is J.R. Ambrose, but he hasn't been a factor. McKinney in the grasp of several Tigers goes down for a seven-yard loss. Gerald Williams, number 98, came crashing through. The fourth leading tackler for the Auburn Tigers and a three-year letterman for Pat Dye. Gerald Williams, Harold Hallman, they're all there. Gerald Williams is going to be there at number 98. Is, is, uh, you want to know why Ambrose is not a factor? Well, the reason is that McKinney doesn't have time to throw the ball to him. Look at him, he's running again. Dumps it off safety valve and a little footstep there. Robert Smith said, no, I don't want that. <laughs> uh, I see some blue guys coming. No, I don't want that one. Arthur Johnson, that, uh, that's a smart thing to do. There was no, actually, there was no reason to even catch the ball there because it would have been for a loss and the clock would have been running. And so you just, I, I know that isn't what he was thinking of at the time. Even though, even though he dropped it, he wasn't thinking about dropping it. He wasn't thinking about his math test on Monday. <laughs> <either>. <laughs> I can tell you that. Third and 18 for David McKinney, sophomore quarterback who's had his hands full of blue and white jerseys. The more correctly, the blue and white jerseys have had their hands full of David McKinney. Draw. A little draw play that is not going to pick up first down yardage at the 27-yard line. Sean Sykes out of West Point, Mississippi. Grabs the ball carrier, and it brings up fourth and another punting situation again. Now, if you're Bill Brewer, you've got a lot of regrouping to do at halftime. Well, Auburn takes a timeout here because they figure they can get that return. Well, while we take a timeout, it's 20 nothing Tigers over Ole Miss. We'll be right back. I think there'll be some parties here in Auburn tonight, do you? Now we got a whole half to go, and it's this Ole Miss team. They can get anything started on offense, but they can't even slow down Auburn now. Bill Smith, the putter, four punts, 42.2 yard average, second snap is high, pulls it down, and he gets a pretty good kick away to Trey Gaynor at the 25 to the 30, and he'll go out of bounds to stop the clock, rolls out of bounds up near the 37 yard line, so 17 seconds left to go on the clock, and Auburn will try to punch it in again, that last drive, well, scoring summary, Nap, a 36 yard field goal in the first quarter, Auburn led 3-0. And then Knapp added a 21-yard field goal. Ole Miss still in the game, just one play out of it. But then Jackson really got on track on the way to a humongous first half. Three-yard air traffic controller hurtled into the end zone. And then Reggie Ware capped it off with a one-yard dive. 20-0 Auburn. And they're not through, Paul McGuire. No, but they've got Bo on, on the sidelines resting for the second half. Washington up top. Sideline look. Fires incomplete and almost intercepted. They need a little more green turf. Wesley Walls, the freshman out of Mississippi, back there in the coverage on Freddie Wagan. Pat Thomas, when they see this this throw that he just made here, he's looking at this big guy. When they see this throw here in the films, they're going to tell him, don't you ever, ever, with all those white shirts, throw that ball out there in the flat like that. Throw that thing away. 12 seconds left on the clock. Why not throw it down deep and either Wait try deep. for the big complete? Absolutely. Wait. <laughs> Good 30, 40 yarder and try for the completion or pass interference. Or, or roll out draw or run out the clock. 
That's Curtis Stewart, number 33 out of Montgomery in the grasp of Ben Morris, the sophomore. And time fires here in the first half. Total offense for Auburn, 274 yards for Mississippi. No. I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to Auburn, Alabama, where the Tigers lead 20-0 over Old Miss. And unfortunately for Old Miss, they're kicking off. Auburn will get the ball back to start the second half. It is Brian Owen out of Atlanta, Georgia, the freshman to spot it from the 40 and back deep. The insurance policy for Bo Jackson, number 30, Tommy Agee. It's high, it's end over end, and it is Collins, number 23, who crosses the 20, hammers his way across the 25, and fights his way up to the 26, where the Auburn Tigers will take over first and 10. Talk about ball, ball control and possession. The Auburn Tigers, in that first half, well, they scored the first four times they touched the football. A 10-play drive using three and a half minutes, a field goal. A 17-play drive that used up 10 minutes, a 6-0 lead. An 8-play drive that took only 242, got them into the end zone, and a 4-minute and 20-second drive added seven more. It's 20-0, and that's our halftime score. That last possession, just two plays and out with only 17 seconds left in the first half. There is the story of the first half, Bo Jackson, who now needs just 29 yards for his third 200-yard game. Let's get an update on that Grambling game. Back to Charlie Neal. Well, sling score. We've got Auburn on top, 20-0 over Old Miss. And on first and 10 from the 41 of Auburn, Tommy Agee cracks over the center, blocking up front by the junior center out of Birmingham, Ben Tamburello and Michael Portis, number 60, the nose guard, in there on the hip. That's one of the key matchups tonight. Actually, Portis outplayed Tamburello a year ago in the game. Not tonight. You know, in the first, now the first series of downs, Bo Jackson carried the ball twice and he gained three yards. And if you take, you took a look at that last play, only two or three yards on a play. Ole Miss has made an adjustment defensively as far as the run game is concerned, but there was a first down by Bolton on pass receiving. Parts in motion, bottom of the screen, second and seven. Jackson cuts it inside. Slithers up near the 48, maybe the 49-yard line in the grasp of Benton Reed, senior out of Baton Rouge, who bench presses 365. Must have thought he hit the bench when Bo Jackson ran into him. You're talking about Ben Tamborello. Let's take a look at it now. His job is he knows the guard has the defensive lineman, so his job is to get on, on Herod, number 66, and he does the job. Tamborello played with a broken hand in the Sugar Bowl against Michigan. Tough competitor. He also went from 200 to 260 pounds from high school to his days here at Auburn. Over the right side, number 34, Jackson. Mike Fitzsimmons hanging on. Bo had to get to the 49-yard line. If he crosses that line, that's first down. Ball 67,500 here at Auburn for the game, and I think all of them were parked in recreational vehicles tailgating before the game since Thursday. <laughs> they come early, I can tell you that. They brought some ice with them, didn't they? <laughs> 11.40 left in the third quarter. Bo Jackson, 34, and Reggie Ware, 36, in the backfield for the Auburn Tigers. Each has scored a touchdown. Tack on two Chris Knapp field goals. 20-zip, Auburn over Old Miss. Pat Washington looks down the left side. Way dead, incomplete at the 18-yard line. Stephen Moore, the freshman, was spun around, and Way Dan was open. When you look at these halftime stats, take a look at... Uh, First downs, only two by Ole Miss. They just can't get anything on track, and they end up with, with rushing yardage, total yardage of 14 to 280. Now, remember Auburn, they average over 500 yards per game. They are right on track now. No turnovers in this game. Holding against Ole Miss. Yeah, that's a very costly penalty. Ole Miss, I think Paul would really have to keep Auburn out of the end zone realistically to have any chance in this football game. If they can get the ball back by an interception or by a fumble, hold them to just three points. Mentally, they're still in it. You fall behind 27-0 here playing in Auburn's turf, you're in trouble. Yeah, we're going to see the holding penalty here, which is an automatic first down. But when, you, when you, you're behind 20 to nothing going into the second half and the team that, that's ahead gets the ball, that gives your team that lift, you must stop that first drive. And so far, Ole Miss has not been able to do that. Billy Brewer, head coach of the Ole Miss Rebels. 
Bo Jackson bumps out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Auburn, by the way, Paul, on first down, has been averaging five and a half yards. <laughs> Not that time. Did you see Pat Washington? He did that fake and that quarterback option coming down the line of scrimmage, and he saw four white jerseys, and he just flipped and said, okay, Bo, <laughs> it's all yours. Do your thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't want any part of it. I'll see you at the huddle, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Go down to the hydrant and turn left. Second and nine after a gain of one by Bo Jackson. 28 rushes, 182 yards. Jackson now 18 yards shy of his third 200-plus yard game. A little dive for AG, the insurance policy for Bo Jackson. That's what Bo Jackson says of Tommy. And he cracks it inside the 25, second inside the 35. Noblin on the tackle. All right, we're looking at that offensive line. Lot, Tamburillo, Cowart. There's, there's the right-hand side. Tamburillo, 53. Or Cowart, excuse me, 53. He, he got help on a double team by Sellers, the tight end. But they just start to bury people. And when they take him on one-on-one, -on -one, and they're doing the job on the line, the defensive line one-on-one, -on -one, it's tough to play defense. Tommy Agee, eight carries, 42 yards. Third and four. Motion by Park, top of the screen. Pitch back, Bo Jackson. First down and more as he dives down to the 29-yard line. Michael Portis, the nose tackle, the first to get to Bo Jackson. He might have stopped Jackson just shy of the strike. Well, that's on pile. I thought Jackson's forward progress was good enough for a first down, but by about half the length of the football, you're leading 20-0. You go. You don't even hesitate. You just go. Kyle it's Collins comes in the game as the H-back, but you go. Explain the H-back. Actually, the H-back then becomes, it's, it's almost the same as a double tight end, but they put him on the wing. And then they can put him in motion and do some, some special things with him. They don't throw the ball to him that much. Well, That's the first down. down. Reggie Ware, who has a touchdown, cracks it over the center. And again, those numbers and names becoming familiar to you. 55, Tamburello, 53, Cowart. Cyril's is 60 on the right side. Lott and Wallace. And the offense is third. Watch the line. Yeah, Jimmy, when, when they start, look at Tamarillo. He already has his man on the ground, and he just rolled over top of him. And all the, all the back has to do is follow him into the hole. You know Ben Tamarillo's favorite food, by the way? Can't be pasta. His grandmother's banana pudding. I'd like to get some. A misdirection to Bo Jackson. And that time, the Rebels sniffed it out. Jones, Lopez Jones, the freshman out of Eupora, Mississippi, number 88. Redshirted last year on the tackle. This may be the first loss of, for Bo Jackson today, and it's a loss of a yard. But Bo Jackson, this is a misdirection. They go one way, and they bring it back. It's like a rollout draw to Bo. When they come back to the side, Jones, number 88, played the play extremely well. No chance for Searles, number 60, who is the right tackle, pulling out on that play to block him. Jones, by the way, 88 switched over to linebacker to help out with the depth problem at defensive end. Ideal size for the rover end. Second and 11. Washington got his man. Wagan out of bounds at the 21 and a half yard line. Just the sophomore number 14 is, and Joe Nathan Shelley. His nickname is Spider Man. Well, he should have thrown a web over Wagan. And watch what Wagan does when he goes out. He just breaks it off. He sees that Shelley is already to the outside or to the inside of the field. And what you don't do is, is make a move there. Here comes Bo. His job now is to block. He's going to block on Jones and knocks his feet out from underneath him. Isn't that beautiful? That takes him out of the place so he can't knock the pass down. Well, he certainly does more than just run with the ball, doesn't he? The team player, number 34, Bo Jackson. We saw him on the hill out here doing programs earlier and helping with parking. <laughs> Right now, he's helping his team to another first down. It is first and 10 at the 12-yard line. Jeff Noblin, who was a high school quarterback, might be in there at quarterback before this one's over. He was in there defensively at the free safety, and Old Miss is in trouble. Jim, you're going to slow Bo Jackson down on a couple of plays. We saw one play that he ran just a moment ago for a loss of a yard, but you're not going to slow him down all night long. Is, is, he, is he over 200? He's close to 200, I know. He's up there about 189 right now, knocking on the door. First and 10, the Tigers are knocking on the door. Motion across by Lee Sellers, the freshman. There goes Bo. Knights his way down to the seven-yard line, and Fuzzy Huddleston, 36 tackles so far for the Rebels for the season. 
Jim, I think the frustrating thing for, for a young Ole Miss team, and, and there are an awful lot of freshmen in there, and they're a very young football team, so they are going to be good. But the frustrating thing is when you're playing uh, this team, Auburn, tonight, and they're gaining on first yard on a running play at least five yards per carry on an average, it is very depressing because now they can do almost anything they want. And they're not a passing team, Auburn, but they can in that position. It's second and five. There goes A.G. A.G. Touchdown, Tigers! Blocking up front on the right side. Sam Barilla, 55 to center. Coward, 53 the right guard. Searle, 60 the right tackle. And their young line, junior, junior, and sophomore across the front side. Yeah, the thing about, about A.G. on this play, it's not as he a great blocker and a powerful runner, but watch the move he makes to get to the hole. The hole is not there. He just skips back to the outside. Great agility. He gets himself into the end zone. Huddleston, Fuzzy Huddleston, number 44, had no chance. Chris Johnson out of the hold of Lewis Colbert. Johnson with three extra points, two field goals, and a 27-0 Auburn lead over Ole Miss. Start the third quarter. Ole Miss hasn't seen the ball, Paul McGuire. And when they've seen it, they've only had it at three plays at a time. The first drive, they had five plays, and that was it. The kickoff by Chris Johnson. Willie Goodlow is back deep at the goal line. He did all that on his own. He was sapped up back at the 10-yard line. 7.40 left in the third quarter. Tigers on their way to a big one. There is what Bo Jackson has done tonight, and there's still 22 minutes left. And by gaining over 100 yards tonight, Bo Jackson has set an Auburn record for 100-yard games in a career with 16. He passes James Brooks, who had 15, and Joe Cribbs with 13. And of course, he's just two yards shy of another 200-yard-plus game. And he'll have four for his career, three of those, Paul McGuire, this year. <laughs> McKinney needs some help. Fires. Got his man incomplete. Ambrose at the 37-yard line. Gerald Williams, the senior, 6'3", 271 with his hands in his face. Yeah. Here's the problem with, with Ole Miss and their possessions. Just take a look. And look at the plays on the left. Five plays, punt. Three plays, punt. Three plays, punt. That's minus yardage. Three plays, punt. Three plays, punt. So that just, just tells you they have not been able to move the ball. McKinney is getting a baptism tonight because the man, we don't know how good a passer he is because he hasn't had enough time to set up and throw the football. McKinney, one out of four for a minus two yards. Down behind the line of scrimmage, Tracy Rocker, the freshman out of Atlanta. Jim, what's frustrating, and that last play is evident of it, McKinney, David McKinney, not only he can't set up to throw the ball because he doesn't have the time, now they're trying to roll him out to throw the football and he can't find any room rolling out. Well, I've got to wonder when Billy Brewer might switch to Kent Austin, even though he's got the knee brace on just to switch and change the momentum. I, I wouldn't switch because there's no way that Austin is going to be able to get back out of there in time. Third and ten. Old Miss trails by 27. Guy of first down yardage, but he didn't hang on. Incomplete. Quite a collision up near the 29. Intended for Michael Smith, the senior out of Philadelphia, Mississippi. And so with only two first downs in the ball game, and they all occurred on the first drive, Ole Miss now has punted for all the last five times they've touched the football. Trey Gaines is back deep for Auburn. And back to do the punting is Bill Smith. It has not been a stellar night for him either. Five yards below his average. He's going to hit one here. Watch. I just have a feeling. A low, spirally kick. Backing Gaines up to the 31. Gaines. All of that on his own. <laughs> a nifty 12-yard return by Trey Gaines. So the Tigers already on top, 27-0, with good field position. We'll be back. Uh, she's a happy Auburn fan right there. Her Tigers out in front, 27-0. With her helmet on, there's been some holes she could run into, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> with some of the holes, she wouldn't need a helmet. <laughs> I think they're big enough. Washington. Oh, in oh. Three and one of the blocks of a set. Wagan, hung on. He turned on the Jets at about the 20-yard line and simply caught up with the football. Jim, you are so right. He outran the ball. Freddie Wagan just at the last second. You talk about timing and going for a football. 
Pat Washington just laid this ball out. He faked up into the middle to Stewart, and then watch it the last second. Watch Wagan. He's trying for the ball. Now he dies. What a gorgeous catch. Well, they said the coach is dead, that he might be the best ever at Auburn when he's done. He's just a sophomore. First and 10 from the 15. Curtis Stewart. Bo Jackson getting a rest just two yards shy of 200 yards. Not much doing around the left side. Old Miss, when they get the ball back, Paul, you know, they've not had a first down since the opening drive. I don't think, what is it, rushing, they have 16 yards total. A lot of, a lot of hats moving around down there. There's your rushing. Bo Jackson, 198, Ole Miss, 16. Second and eight. That is Reggie Ware, who tacked on a touchdown, dives down near the six-yard line, about a yard shy of first down yardage. Ware is also just a sophomore. Scored his first touchdown as a Tiger here tonight on the dive. Lester Brinkley on the stop, but brings up third and a short one. Kyle Collins, the senior, out of Glansden, Alabama, steps into the lineup. Now he goes his back wife to keeping back. stats up in the booth. Oh, that's right. Where Collins and Stewart. Oh, what a hit. It's Curtis Stewart, but it's good enough for a first down. First and goal, Auburn from the four. Well, Flakes, who is the strong safety, is in the backfield. And you're going to see him come across, and he's the man that gets his shot right there. Does not make the play. And then they pick up another first down inside the five. They're at the four-yard line, Auburn, and they're on the way to another touchdown. That's his name, by the way. That's not a nickname, Flakes. Nickname Frosted. <laughs> it is. Frosted Flakes. From Battle Creek. <laughs> no, it's not from Battle Creek. <laughs> Where? Stewart and Pat Washington wants to time up. I think his biggest problem is to decide who wants to score. And he's trying to figure out which guy he wants to give it to next. You know, the he's not trying to figure it out. They're having a debate. Give it to me. Give it to me. Jim. All right, we've got an update. I think on that Purdue-Minnesota game, the Golden Gophers with a bit of an upset. Let's go back to George Graham. That's right, Jim. When you say who wants to score, Minnesota sure does tonight, leading 14-3. to Quarterback Ricky Foggy hits receiver Harry Couch with a 64-yard TD pass. Minnesota leads 21-3, to and they weren't done yet. With Minnesota leading by that 18-point margin, the Gophers recumber, recover a Purdue fumble. On the ensuing drive, Valdez Baylor scores on a 19-yard run. Minnesota built up its lead to 35-9. to We are at halftime. Now let's go back to you, Jim. So, Lou Holtz's Golden Gophers, who played Oklahoma extremely tough last weekend, getting Purdue all they can handle and more. Holding Purdue at nine points. That's tough duty, especially with Jim Everett, the quarterback of Purdue. He's excellent. You know the thing about Auburn? With Pat Washington throwing the ball as well as he's throwing the ball, he's 7 for 11, 107 yards. That gives a team a little bit more to think about, that he can throw the football. He has now established himself as the quarterback of Auburn. From the four, it's first and goal. Back to Cook, Curtis Stewart. Washington wants to send it to the end zone. Man is open, and it is picked off. Joe Nathan Shelley comes up with the interception. So the Rebels on the short end, 27-0, come up with a defensive play that they sorely needed. That is not going to make the other teams worry. <laughs> there was no one to throw the ball to, and Pat Washington this time should have thrown the ball away. Shelley, number 39, is going to come up with the interception. But, Jim, take a look. No one's open. Just throw the ball out of the end zone. Do not throw the ball into the end zone where it can be picked off. Not a man around. The only man close was Jeff Parks, number 82, and he wasn't even close to him. So with 4.26 left in the third quarter, the Rebels get the football back. And let's see if it's still David McKinney, the sophomore quarter quarterback out of Stevenson, Alabama. It is. Wide to the right side, J.R. Ambrose, the game breaker, who has not really been a factor. We told you about turf toe earlier. And now late word, sprained ankle. Pitch back, bad pitch, loose football, Wansley. It is still loose at the 10, and it is covered by the Rebels. McKinney, the quarterback, fell on the loose football. 
Now, if you're Billy Brewer, what's important here? Obviously, keep your defense off the field for a while and give them a rest, but it's a matter of pride. You'd like to take down, punch it in for a score. Yeah, that's, that's without question. You want to score, but what you would like to do here is at least put a drive together. Jim, they have not been able to put any kind of a drive together. Only two first downs. And one, one time they had the ball for five plays. Other than that, they have not. Three plays and punch. Right. Second and 20. McKinney right over the middle. Open man is Wansley, and he drops the ball. Wansley, and you can't get more wide open than that. Had a first down and might have broken a big play. We wondered if McKinney can throw the football. Yes, he can. This ball was right on target. He knew it. He knew he had Wansley open going down the middle. The safeties were split. Wansley comes out of the backfield right up the middle of the field. This time, McKinney had enough time to throw the football. Follows through, but look where the ball hits. Wansley, right in the hand. Wansley led Ole Miss last year in rushing and receiving. McKinney on third and 20. And they will punt again. Stallworth, Ron Stallworth, a freshman out of Pensacola, redshirted last year. And it's time to see Mr. Smith again. When you have time to throw the football like McKinney had the play before, then you drop the ball. Now they go back. They know they have to throw the football. Auburn does. And then they just go after him. McKinney's going to step up inside. Stallward, number 92. Watch him. He's right in the middle of your screen. He'll get off of his blocker. And now he's going to run down McKinney. Good play by the nose man. Trey Gain is 19, is back deep. Bill Smith, the punter. Standing in his own end zone. Gets this one away from the five, and it was almost blocked. Low, wobbly kick. Gaines gets out of the way, and it goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line of Auburn. So, we've got 2.52 left to go in the third quarter. A long way to go for the Rebels. They trail 27-0. Along with Paul McGuire, I'm Jim Kelly, and welcome back to Auburn, Alabama. 2.52 left to go, 27 nothing. The Tigers on top over the Rebels. Bo Jackson has the bail, and he gets it up to the 40-yard line. A pickup of two, and that gives him 200 yards for the game, Paul. And that's four career 200-yard efforts, three of those this year. <laughs> Someone said once that the, the offensive line might have a problem learning the eye formation as opposed to the wishbone, and that's why Bo Jackson may be having problems this year. He's had three 200-yard games. That's, what a terrible problem. Boy, that line was sure slow to respond, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. They are a good offensive line. And getting better, and they're young. Just one senior. Now, Mr. Jackson again, down to the 45 of Ole Miss. Jeff Noblin and Fuzzy Huddleston again on the tackle. They've been very active. And as you start tracking Bo Jackson's yardage now, after that carry of almost 18 yards, he's approaching the Auburn all-time single-game mark set by Curtis Kuykendall against Miami back in 1944. That record's 307 yards. So Bo's about 88 yards shy of the all-time mark. I think he's just shut the mouths of a lot of critics about whether Bo Jackson is hiding with the material or not. Washington? In the ground, looking for Trey Gaynor, side of Cairo, Georgia. And I'll tell you one thing, Bo Jackson, I, I spent a lot of time with him yesterday. Bo Jackson is nothing but a team football player. Well, he's also quite a baseball player. You had a chance to ask him now if he's got to make the decision he's going to play baseball or football. What do you say? He said, I'm going to play football in the fall and baseball in the spring. And I said, does that mean you're going to play both pro football and pro baseball? He said, no, I'm going to play ball. He's playing pinball with the Rebels. There he goes inside the 40 and down to the 37, stacked up about two yards shy of the first down by Fuzzy Huddleston once again. Jim, again, not to get away from Bo Jackson, we know how good he is. But when you have blockers like A.G. and Ware and that offensive line that has done so very well, and they're just, they're after the Ole Miss Rebels. But again, we must tell you that Ole Miss, they have an awful lot of young players on this football team. You saw that graphic, 224 yards for Bo Jackson, 307, the all-time Auburn record, and here he goes again. He is just unbelievable. First down for the Tigers, down at the 26. 
Jeff Noblin on the tackle. Well, here they go again. Coward, Ben Tamburillo. They just, Ben Tamburillo, number 55, the center. Now, here's his job. He blocks back on Portis. And once he does that, now here goes Bo on the outside. There goes A.G. Look at A.G. Just circling the corner. Now he's going to spray. Pick up everything. Bo, if he gets by one tackler there, he was gone. First and ten Tigers from the 25 of Ole Miss. It's only a third quarter, folks. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Washington on the post. Got his man. First and goal inside the five. Ron Middleton, the senior out of Outmore, Alabama. Big target, 6'2", 240. They were just were not covering Middleton. He is the H-back. I guess you can call him a tight end also. But he was in the slot position. And Pat Washington faked. And look at that step up. He follows through beautifully. Right on target. Middleton catches the ball. He is at the four-yard line. They're getting ready to score again. Middleton, by the way, the offensive MVP after the spring game. The H-back. First and goal from the four. Bo Jackson in the tailback spot. He's got one touchdown on the night. And if he gets outside, he'll get another. Driven backwards at the two-and-a-half-yard line is number 34. They call Bo Jackson the Paul Bunyan of Auburn. We've talked about his potential with a baseball career. He could be the number three, four, or five hitter. He's got power to hit 40 home runs, and he's fast enough. I'm Jim Kelly. Welcome back to Auburn. The Tigers in total command, 27-0 against the Rebels. Now you can have a go again. Second down, three to go for another touchdown. Bo Jackson, who's averaged 6.4 yards per carry, and he's had a ton of them, is about to bang it in again. Touchdown, Tigers. His second touchdown of the night, and the big blocking by the eight-back, eight back, number 87, Ron Middleton. You just had the feeling after losing to Tennessee, and we've talked to Coach Dye. He had this team fired up. They, they practiced so well this weekend. You know, you see this offensive line, Middleton on the outside. He does get an excellent block, caves it in. Bo goes to the outside. Really not brought down. It was in the end zone. Wow. First snap has been busy, and he's been perfect. Take another look as it comes at you and watch 87, Paul. Here comes Bo Jackson off the outside. They just seal everything inside. When you seal the defense inside, there's only one man sitting on the outside, and that was more, no chance. You and I can take that hot air balloon back home. Thank you, Payne Weber. <laughs> From the 40-yard line, Chris Johnson to Willie Goodlow, who says, give me some blockers. Now he says, we'll give it over to McKinney at the 20-yard line. The Rebels come out, and I believe the Rebels have only had 21 plays from scrimmage, partner. Well, when you look at, when you look at what's happened per possession, this is per possession now. Ole Miss, 3.2. Auburn 9.4. That's plays per possession each time. Now look at this. Auburn 71 plays. Ole Miss 21. 50 plays more in this game. And Bo Jackson has been involved in 37 of those. Penalty flags all over the field. Bo Jackson now 812 yards in four games. Averaging about six and a half yards. And there is Mr. Jackson, whose son will only have to decide between a multi-million dollar contract to play pro baseball. I guess they'll probably give him a franchise in the NFL. Well, you go out, you go out and order a new fishing boat. <laughs> <laughs> and Bo's, he, he keeps looking at his, at his daddy. And just tell daddy, you can buy anything you want, because Bo will be a multi-millionaire before it's all over with. There he is. Bo Jackson, by the way, is one of ten children that grew up in poverty in the Birmingham suburb of Bessemer, Alabama. His father there is a steel worker. McKinney wants some help. Look, fires, and it's up in the tuba section. In the general direction of J.R. Ambrose. Well, at that time, just looking, remember what Tennessee did to Auburn as far as their pass, passing was concerned? That time, when, you, when McKinney looked downfield, every single person was covered. And they had two people in possession. But again, Auburn knows that they're going to throw the football, and this defensive line is just going to tee off and go. Second down and 15. McKinney 
way over the head of Ambrose, who went up for the ball anyway. And Ambrose got punched pretty good by number 32, Jonathan Robinson, the senior out of Camp Hill, Alabama, who was redshirted back in 84. There is Florida, an upset over LSU. So Bill Arnsbarger's Tigers having their hands full down in the bayou. Baylor up big by 10 against Houston. Of course, George Grant updated you on that score. That's just at the half. That's a major surprise. Maryland finally pulling away from North Carolina State. And back to action we go on third and 15. Oh, down goes McKinney again. Back at the five-yard line. Crashing through. Nate Hill just a sophomore out of McLean, Georgia, who's an avid weightlifter. That time he bench-pressed David McKinney. So the whole offensive line now for Ole Miss is starting to collapse because Hill just comes right up the middle. No one even slowed him down. McKinney didn't have a chance as he stepped up. Nate Hill knocked him on the ground. So it is punting time once again for Ole Miss. Bill Smith out of Little Rock, the junior, has been very active tonight, as has Trey Gaines. And Gaines should give the Tigers again excellent field position. High, oh, great high, kick. spiraling kick. Gaines at the 45. In the Rebel territory, down at the 47. 13.50 left to go in this football game. 34-0, Auburn on top over the Rebels of Billy Brewer. Bill Smith, six foot three, 225 pounds. Look at this. He goes up for the ball. They have problems with the snap because they have a new snapper. But watch here now. He turns the ball. His head and his toe right there. The toe is down. The head's down. A good kick. Hand off to Curtis Stewart around the right side and the new quarterback for the Auburn Tigers, the sophomore number 12, Jeff Berger out of Cedartown, Georgia. 12 out of 24, 507 yards passing, one touchdown and one interception so far in the season redshirted back in 83 and there is what Jeff Berger has done Washington leads 8 out of 14 128 yards and one interception and I'm looking down here and Bo on the sideline he has his helmet off and I think Bo is finished for the evening penalty flag is down he'll update the Bo Jackson story for you Bo Jackson was <laughs> well he set a new record another new record 37 rushes tonight which breaks the old mark set by Joe Cribb, which was 36. He's got 237 yards, Bo Jackson does. His fourth 200 career yard rushing game, three of those this year. And of course he came in only 425 yards behind Joe Cribb's all-time Auburn rushing uh, Has the punter, Lewis Colbert, even loosened up tonight? <laughs> He's the nation's leading punter. He hasn't had to. Berger unloads. Dumps it off to A.G. First down for the Tigers. A.G. looping out of the backfield. Berger can throw the football. He saw action in three games last year. Eight out of 13, 95 yards and one score. Do you, see, do you see Tommy A.G. when he caught the ball? Now, most, a lot, a lot of people will, will kind of run out of bounds. Not A.G. He wants to take on some people. He took on Flake. Another first and ten. Looks like Eddie Robinson will break that milestone tonight. And he's 20 nothing lead over Prairie View A&M. First and ten Tigers from the 35 of Ole Miss. Berger, the quarterback, on the option, pitches it back. That is Curtis Stewart, the junior from Montgomery, and Everett Flake, who is the second strongest deep back on the Ole Miss squad, came up to make the hit. Reeves had a good block on Flake, and all Stewart had to do was cut back to the inside, but he runs into Flake. Here comes the toss coming down. Berger is here. He's going to flip the ball out to Stewart. Now, when Stewart gets the ball, if he turns upfield here, he's got a play. But look what happens. Flake is there. Reeves is on. Number 86 is down there blocking. Flake's is strong. Ware turns around and tells Curtis Stewart to play. Wait a on a dive on second and four. <laughs> Did you see a lot of people moving before the ball was snapped? I saw defensive guys on the offensive side. I saw offensive guys on the defensive side. But I didn't see any yellow, yellow, yellow flag. I'll tell you, there was more dancing there than in our hotel. Well, it was all happened on the right-hand side of, uh, uh, of, the, of the play. Third and one. Go, go, go! Not up late when you're an Auburn Tiger fan. 
They needed to get down to the 25-yard line. Reggie Ware behind the blocking up front of Jim Thompson now, the freshman out of Enterprise, Alabama, the new center replacing Ben Tamborello. Jeff Bacon, sophomore, came up, the linebacker for Ole Miss. And let's see what happens when they unpop. That whole line is all new, I think, now, Jim. Well, you've got Eric Floyd, 78, in at left tackle. Sophomore out of Rome, Georgia, for Auburn. Randy Stokes, senior out of Tallahassee at left guard. Thompson, we mentioned the new center. Rob Schuler's the senior right tackle out of Atlanta. Here's an interesting note for you. Rob Schuler is a descendant of Martha Washington. <laughs> Did you find that one? Berger back to pass. Receiver turned it inside. The ball thrown behind Kyle Collins. Kyle Collins went in. Berger threw it outside. There's what Auburn has done. Of course, very big loss as far as the SEC is concerned. Tennessee, they were never really in that football game. They've got Florida State next and Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jackets are going to be heard from. They had a big win today. And Mississippi State, Florida, East Carolina. And the Bulldogs, Vince Dooley, and they'll close it out with Ray Perkins in the Crimson. Second and ten. Pitch back, and it goes to Curtis Stewart. Big hole, right side, inside the 20. The thing that's so impressive about Auburn is the fact that not only can they run the ball, but they've shown tonight that they can throw the football. But every time that they get the ball, Jim, it's it's a six-minute drive, it's a ten-minute drive, it's an eight-minute drive. They control not only the football, but the clock. But when they do that, they also score at the end of it. Third and three from the 18-yard line of Ole Miss. Ten and a half left to go in the game. Stewart, left side, loose football, and Mississippi's got it. Ole Miss comes up with the interception or the fumble. Joe Nathan Shelley. You know, Ole Miss has been pushed around, but not that man. Joe Nathan Shelley with an interception, now a fumble recovery. Well, what happens here is this ball hits the ground. Here comes Stewart in there, and the ball, you're going to see the ball flip up in the air, but once it hits the ground, that, no, it didn't hit. Well, Joe Nathan Shelley was on the ground when he caught the ball. His knee was down. If the ball would have hit the ground, he still couldn't return. He has to catch it in the air to return a fumble. I knew I had that right. Did I? Yeah. I still want to find out how Schuler is a descendant of Martha Washington. I know Martha's probably watching from upstairs. Satellite. Mm. Unscrambled. Oh, Sean Sykes, the freshman, gets a rough indoctrination into things at Auburn. The saga of Bo Jackson. Over on the sideline, all of our Heisman candidates. Certainly the odds-on candidate and what he's done in the first four games of this year. He will have a thousand yards after five. We'll come back to Bo Jackson in a second on second four for Ole Miss. They've only been shut out one time in their last 95 games. Here is McKinney misfiring incomplete near the 30. Back to Bo Jackson for a second. We told you he's one of ten children. He really credits Bo does. Bo does his uh, sports career with uh, keeping him out of the state prison. When he and a bunch of friends killed some hogs during a sixth grade prank, his mother wanted to send him to the reform school where one of the Jacksons already resided. But the owner of the hogs that had been slaughtered was a minister. And he talked Mrs. Jackson and Bo into having the young man participate in sports. Well, the rest is history. Great decision. Great decision. Third and four. This one to J.R. Ambrose, and it is incomplete. Back on the coverage, Kevin Porter. And while you look at J.R. Ambrose, he has caught at least one pass in the last seven Rebel games. Tonight, zip for zip. Uh, Kevin Porter really showed me something because we know that J.R. Ambrose can fly. And Kevin Porter, when a ball went up in the air, Kevin Porter just turned it on and not only knocked the ball away, but also caught up with J.R. Ambrose. Now, here's McKinney stepping up, and he's, he's throwing the ball straight up in the air. And he's giving Ambrose a chance to run underneath the ball. Look at that. And there's Porter right there. No chance. Fourth and four, Craig Gaines back deep for Bill Smith's punt. The eighth punt of the night. Gaines. Oh. A 
against a Met mixer named Howard Moss. Met him head on. We've got 9.32 left to go here at Auburn. The Tigers in total command over the Rebels. 9.32 left to go. First and 10. Old Miss on the short end. They've been on the short six since the game started. Only two first downs for the Rebels. Berger at quarterback bends in. The back to Street, 26. And Collins. It is Street on a dive play. Nothing doing. Second and 10. Well, the NHL is back on ESPN with an exclusive three-year national cable contract. Your total sports network going to deliver up to 33 regular season games, the NHL All-Star Game, and a full complement of Stanley Cup playoff contests to boot. Be at center ice. The first game coming up, the Capitals against the New York Rangers. Ted Stater makes his coaching debut with the Rangers Thursday at 7.30 Eastern time right here on ESPN. Berger. Wants to deliver and does. Right on the money to Lawrence Tillman, the freshman out of Mobile, who also punts. Last year at LaFleur High School, Tillman had 29 catches and four touchdowns. So we're talking about hockey. Watch out for the Sabres. Jim Schoenfeld is the new coach up there. Grab your socks, boys. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll be the on-ice host, if you will, for the NHL series here on ESPN. And I was Rookie of the Year at Toledo in 1960 with Luma. You know that nobody really cares that you were rookie of the year in anything uh, in the mid 60s. Let's just say it's back then. Less than nine minutes to go. There goes Curtis Stewart again. Hey, Jimmy, you mentioned something in the last series of downs that Auburn had the ball. The number one kicker in the nation, Lewis Colbert, has not. He's not even come close where he had to punt the ball. I want to see him kick. I know they didn't want to see him kick, Auburn, but I would like to see him kick. It has been a long night since Batman led the Rebels out of the tunnel. They had two first downs on their first possession, and that was it. Pitch back. It goes to Curtis Stewart again. Chopped down behind the line of scrimmage. You might get to see him punt. It's third and long. Well, the thing, the thing about Ole Miss is that they, they never at any time got their offense on track. Uh, I think, I, I guess you're right. The, the first time they had the ball, they had the ball for five plays. Ever since that time, they have not had it for, I don't think, more than three. Third and five, out wide to the right side. Gainer. Berger looks right on the money. Got his man, Freddie Wigan again, the sophomore. What did you say about punting? Well, last year, Freddie, number nine, number 14 here, averaged almost 25 yards per catch. Watch him on the out pattern. Well, Freddie Wigan is thrown to the outside, or, or excuse me, Berger is thrown to the outside to, to Wigan, and he is just right on target. Stewart is the man number 16 out there, but he didn't have a chance. That pass is perfect. Wagan, a physical education major. First and ten for the Tigers. That is Kyle Collard, the senior. Plans to go to law school after graduating from Auburn. Cracks over the left side for a short gain. 7.35. Level defense. Then back on their heels. <laughs> Bo, set a Wake up, Bo. Yeah. Our producer, Bruce Connell, said, I think Bo's tired. He's only carried the ball 37 times for over 230, what, 237 yards. He'd be tired, too. Get up, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a hit at the 25-yard line. Trey Gaines on the catch. Reminds himself of Fred Bolitnikoff and Joe Nathan Shelley, who certainly has been a standout and other was otherwise suspect defensive effort. Fumble recovery, interception. They told us that, that Joe Nathan Shelley would hit you, <laughs> and he really would. He's a tough football player. You know, by the way, Bo's name is not Bo, it's Vincent. I'll tell you how he got that nickname in a minute. There goes Kyle Collins again. Slithers forward. Lose football. Covered by the Tigers. Everything has gone right. 
He'll get back on a shot of Bowes falling asleep on the sideline over there. He described himself, Bo Jackson did, as the ultimate neighborhood bully. Beat up smaller kids when he was younger. He was always getting into trouble. His friends said that he was tough as a wild boar. So pretty soon, all of his friends started calling him Bo instead of Vincent. Well, he was a wild boar tonight, wasn't he? Tired. Looks like he's been shot full of tranquilizers. <laughs> Demetrius Street on a dive play in the grasp of Fuzzy Huddleston. 6-10 and counting left to go in this football game. The Auburn Tigers. You know, we have talked so much about the Auburn Tigers offensively and certainly to Bo Jackson until it has been. But you've got to credit the Auburn defense too. They were embarrassed by the Volunteers of Tennessee. Never in the ball game. Passed on almost at will by Mr. Robinson. Well, they made amends. And I'll, we talked to Pat Dye and he said that Thursday they had the best practice that they had had this entire fall. And he also, Pat, said that they did so well. He gave them off on Friday. They did not practice. He had a team meeting with them. He said, our football team is ready to play. And they learned something in that Tennessee game. Look at Iowa was number one going into this week, and they got, they got scared by Michigan State. They only won that game by four. Tough being number one, friends. Inside handoff to Demetrius Street, the junior. And Auburn's total offense now, Paul McGuire, approaching 560 yards. How about going to get Mississippi? Won't take long. Zero. In total Zero offensive, offensive yardage. And that's in 55, as of right now, 55 minutes of play. Offensively, Ole Miss, they do not have a yard. That is scary. What's scary will be the Rebels' practice for the next six days. No, I'm going to tell you something. Now, this football team, they, we know that they're a young football team, and Billy Brewer knows it. They've got a lot of things to learn. Dive play over the middle to Curtis Stewart. They just keep it on the ground and pounding away. They pick up another first down, the Tigers do. They went for it on that short fourth and one situation. For a young football team, Jim, you can learn a lot from this game. Here they go over the top. Hey, what I learned, you don't want to play Auburn after being upset by Tennessee. That's, that's the first thing you learn. Yeah, the first thing is change your schedule. There's Kyle Collins who picks up the first down, and that keeps the clock moving. This has been another uh, pretty good drive as far as time is concerned. And it's been a drive with the second string offensive line and second string backfield. There goes number 33, Curtis Stewart, into the end zone for another Auburn touchdown. Everybody into the scoring back tonight. Reggie Ware has a touchdown, Curtis Stewart with one, Bo Jackson with two, Chris Knapp, two field goals, and a long night for a good coach. Yes, he is. He's a, he's a tough coach, and he'll turn this thing around at Ole Miss. But here they come again. Remember, now, this is the second offense, totally the second offense. Herod, number 66, made the tackle in the end zone. Chris Snap has been perfect, as has Chris Johnson. Johnson with the extra point. 4.07 left to go. This one's out of control. Really? <laughs> we'll be back after this break. <laughs> Triumph, 41-0. You see the time left, 4.07 remaining. The George Grand School Board Show coming up. Highlights, scores, some nighttime action. A look at the top 20 as well. Back to action we go. Willie Goodlow watches this one fail into the end zone. First and 10, Ole Miss from their 20-yard line. Again, it is 41-0. The Rebels, Paul McGuire, have only been shut out one time in their last... 95 games. And as of right now, if those stats are up to date, and they usually are right on target, let me repeat to you if you, I don't know whether you just tuned in or not, I don't know why you would have, <laughs> 41 to nothing. <laughs> Ole Miss, no offensive yardage, zero. Auburn, over 500. One pass completion. He's been sacked three times. Boy, it seems like he's thrown the ball more than 10 times. But they haven't had the ball long enough to throw it more than 10 times. Unloads, got his man out of the backfield for a pickup of about four yards. A small pickup to Greg Lee, the freshman. He was a tight end after the spring practice, redshirted last year, Greg Lee was. 
had a hamstring pull in the preseason. Thought to be out for the year, but was available last week at Tulane and obviously is seeing a little action tonight. Second down and seven for Old Miss. Brown wide to the left side, replacing J.R. Ambrose. Here comes McKinney in the dirt. J.R. Ambrose had caught a pass in one out of the last nine Rebel games. Darren Johnson, the intended receiver on that play. Florida leading LSU 20 to nothing. Baylor had a 17-point lead. Houston coming back. That one's still up for grabs, and George Grand will have a final for you. Minnesota upsetting Purdue. Lou Holtz has the Golden Gophers back in business. Maryland getting on track against the Wolfpack. No contest in Texas. Here comes McKinney again. Little dancing feet. Throws it into the dirt, and we will see Bill Smith, the punter, once again. He might be approaching some kind of record for most punts. Ron Stallworth, the freshman, putting pressure on McKinney. It's a good thing Stallworth puts pressure on because the rest of the defensive line, they were on the ground. 325. Clock, of course, stopped on the incompleted pass. Freddie Wagan, number 14, back deep on the punt coverage. Bill's going to have to put that leg in the whirlpool. And there is Bill Smith punting. Off the side of his foot. They'll just let it roll. A blowout here in Auburn. Let's check in and find out how things are going in Dallas with Eddie Robinson and Graveling. Here's Charlie Neal. Hey, we see you've got a cliffhanger like we do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Auburn just, they've, Ever since uh, we've been away, they've just controlled the football, and they just had a, a, a penalty here. But they picked up one first down, and now they're in that second, uh, second and 14. Second and 14 now. Second and 14 as Billy Brewer looks on from the 48-yard line of Ole Miss, 102, and that's more than tells the tale of this football game. There goes Curtis Stewart. He's had a touchdown dive, and now he dives inside the 40, down to the 38 of the Rebels. Well, I wonder if we could go back to Charlie Neal. He could tell us again what Grampling was called before they changed the name. I'm so glad they changed it. I, there's just no way that you'd be able to. You're right. You couldn't get it in. They picked up, what, about eight or nine yards on that play. They get uh, they had 585, pick up another six or seven, and they go over 600 yards. I think we've got one more snap, barring penalty in this game. Look at Auburn. A new SEC record for first downs with 28. Walden is the new quarterback, Bobby Walden, freshman out of Bainbridge, Georgia. Gives the ball to Curtis Stewart, and if he stays in bounds, that should do it. Down at the 37-yard line with just 10 ticks left on the clock. So Pat Dye and the Auburn Tigers certainly made amends after being upset by the Volunteers of Tennessee, and for Billy Brewer and the Rebels of Ole Miss, they'll have to get ready for Georgia. Certainly no easy pass. Not at all. You've got to keep the momentum going now. 41-0, the final score. Auburn on top over Ole Miss. We'll be right back after these messages. In the first, the first two drives of Auburn, they held them to two field goals. They had some confidence in their defense at that time, holding them. But the problem was Jim Kelly is the fact that they could never get their offense on track. And this is official Ole Miss total yardage in a 60-minute football game, nine yards. 587 yards for the Tigers and over 200 yards, of course, for All-America and Heisman Trophy candidate Bo Jackson. We'll be back with a look at our ESPN MVPs. But right now, let's take time out. Tigers triumph big. Only gone nine yards in 60 minutes of football. There were no offensive stars for Ole Miss, but certainly on defense, I think we agree on Joe Nathan Shelley. No question about it. He had a fumble recovery. He had an interception. Joe Nathan she Shelley was hitting people. This is a tough football player. On offense, Auburn, no surprise. No, I was going to pick the off one of the offensive guards, but we're going to settle with Bo Jackson. 38 carries, 240 yards, two touchdowns. Four 200-yard games in his career, three of them this year. He's certainly on track, and he only missed the all-time Auburn rushing mark by 67 yards. 
back with Paul McGuire and some final comments from Auburn, Alabama after this timeout. 